gear. That's what we're talking about today, and I don't mean the kind the Liver King's on. I'm no Peter McKinnon or Gerald Undone, and I don't really consider myself a nerd when it comes to camera gear, but I am a travel creator whose gear is an integral part of my life, so I thought I'd sit down and show you guys what gear I use, what I like and don't like about it, and some lower budget options for those just starting out. So I shoot both photos and videos while traveling, so it's important for my gear to perform well for both of those. And since traveling is such a huge part of what I do, it's important for my gear to be as small and compact Act as possible. So those are the factors I use when considering what gear to buy. It's also important to mention, I didn't buy all this gear at one time. I started with a pretty small setup and bought more and more gear over the years as photography and video started making more and more money, and I needed more and more gear to make better videos. First off, the camera I shoot with is a Sony a7 IV, and I can't recommend this thing enough. I absolutely love it. It's mirrorless and super lightweight. Example. It shoots 33 megapixel photos, which, if you ask me, is the perfect image size. It shoots 4K 30 in full frame and 4K 60 at a 1.5 crop. And lots of people complain about this, but I have no complaints. I mean, I feel like whenever I use a slow mo clip, it's usually something that's zoomed in anyways and a crop doesn't really matter. The only things where I really need full frame is shooting real estate or interior spaces, in which case the camera is usually on a gimbal moving slowly and there's just no need for slow mo. On top of that, this camera has incredibly good autofocus and eye tracking. You can even set it to track human, animal, or bird eyes. So Big Bird, if you're watching this and want to start a travel vlog, good news. And one of my absolute favorite things about this camera is its low light abilities. Sony is just notorious for being the king of low light, and this camera is no exception. I can crank that ISO harder than I crank that Soulja Boy and still see no noise. This is super useful for videos where I have a lot of shots in low light, like my jungle survival video. One other note with this thing is I really like how the screen can flip out and swivel around and do all this nonsense. When you're trying to vlog and see yourself, it's it's just so useful. The Sony a7 IV is an absolute beast, and this will cost you about $2,500, which I think is pretty good considering what it's capable of. But if you're new to all this and just want a cheaper hobby camera for traveling, my recommendation for an entry-level camera is the Canon Rebel T7. It's about $400, and in my opinion, is probably the best quality camera you can get for under $500. Now, let's talk about lenses. And as you'll notice, the image quality is much better. Oh wait, I'm gonna need that lens. Never mind. So my main lens that I use for just about everything is the Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master lens. This lens is incredible. Autofocus is bomb, it has built-in stabilization, and it's super sharp. At $2,300, it's a pretty pricey endeavor, but if you're serious about photography or video and have the money, it's absolutely a worthwhile investment. Personally, I kind of splurged on this lens because I use this focal length the most, and then I bought cheaper lenses for my wide and zoom lenses that I won't use as much. If if you ask me, I think the camera lens is even more important than the camera itself, so I think it's worthwhile to have a really nice lens. But if you want a cheaper option, you can also get the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 for about $1,000. My second most used lens is my Sigma 16mm f1.4, and I use this for shooting real estate interiors, astro, wide landscapes, anything that needs a wide angle. And because the aperture opens to 1.4, this is also really good to use in low light situations like indoors or at night. And I've never had any problems with this warping scenes or giving a fisheye look like some wider lenses do. And good news, this lens is only $400, which is probably a breath of fresh air after hearing the price on that last lens. And my third and final lens I regularly use is my Tamron 70-300, and I use this for shooting any scenes that require extra zoom, like faraway mountains or wildlife. Now, a lot of people out there might poo-poo on this lens because it has a 4.5 to 6.3 aperture, and it's definitely not a great lens for low light, but as long as you're shooting in good light, I love the way this lens looks, and for $500, you're probably not going to find any better. Next up, we need to talk about my gimbal, the DJI Ronin RS2. So for those who don't know, this is a stabilizer that really helps get nice, creamy motion in shots. I don't use it on every shoot, but when I can, it definitely helps add an extra layer of quality. And this particular gimbal is my favorite, not only because it does a great job, but it's really small compared to most gimbals, so I can really easily break it down and pack it into my bag for travel. And this guy is about $550, but there's a smaller mini version if you want something cheaper and have a smaller camera. On to my favorite piece of camera gear, 
my drone. Boom, boom, boom. That's the noise it'd be making right there. Personally, I travel with the Mavic Air 2S because it's so much smaller than even the Mavic 2 Pro and really gets the job done just as well for my purposes. It shoots 4K 60 video, 20 megapixel photos, auto stitches, vertical panoramas for Instagram bangers, and is altogether just a great drone. The only things I don't love about this drone is it's more lightweight, so wind can be a little more of an issue. And it just doesn't seem to be quite as good in low light as my Mavic 2 Pro, which I still use for some local video projects like shooting real estate. But given the size and the cost, this is still definitely my favorite travel drone. This drone is about a grand, but I'd recommend getting the fly more combo so you have some extra batteries and accessories, and that's about 1100. Next up is my action cam of choice, which is the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Or maybe it's the GoPro 8 Hero Black? GoPro Black Hero 8? The words GoPro 8 Hero and Black are all in there somewhere, and that's all you need to know. I feel like the Yahoos at GoPro are always coming up with something new. I literally don't even know what number they're on right now, but I like the 8 because it has everything I need and nothing I don't. I have two of these, and I'll use them for anything underwater or when I need a POV of something crazy, but I also love using them for time lapses on my construction videos. Almost every time lapse on my tiny home videos was shot on these, and it was really nice because it freed up my Sony so I could get other shots with that. And these are only $250 right now because they're an older model. But trust me, you don't need the newer ones. They're kind of like iPhones. Oh. Ow, I just burned myself on that hot take. And also, this is a Sandmark GoPro stick I have on one of these. If you can't tell from my Instagram stories, I really like this thing. Next, let's talk about audio, which is way more important than a lot of people think. Bad audio quality can mess up a video even more than bad video quality, if you ask me. So I've made a really conscious effort to try to nail audio on my last few videos. On top of my camera, I use a Rode VideoMic Pro, and this does a pretty solid job of catching audio on more run and gun video projects. Whenever possible, though, I use my Tascam DR10L lav mic, which is actually what I'm using for this video right now. It automatically adjusts sensitivity to pick up audio at the right level, and is super high quality. I initially bought two of these for filming weddings, but now I use them for just about everything. And these are about 200 bucks, but trust me, every dollar is well spent. The tripod I normally travel with is the Sunpack Travelite Pro. I don't really put too much thought into tripods, but I got it at Best Buy once and it worked pretty good. And finally, the camera bag I use to hold all that stuff is the Wandered Provoke bag spelled like that. Those guys clearly don't like vowels. They actually gave me this a couple years ago in exchange for posting some Instagram stories about it, but I actually genuinely ended up liking it and now I use it for almost everything, so this isn't sponsored good bag. And there you have it, David's camera gear. Again, I didn't buy all this stuff at once. It's slowly accumulated throughout my career as a freelance photographer and videographer. And it's been a pretty worthwhile investment, I'd say. And let me tell you something, you're probably overwhelmed looking at this, thinking there's no way you could afford to get into photography or video. But let me tell you something, everything you need to get started is right here in this little rectangle. Smartphones are better than ever, and you can absolutely capture incredible memories, start a successful travel vlog, or even make a short film with only a phone. Video ideas, personality, and storytelling skills are so much more important than video quality. I mean, a good storyteller traveling with an iPhone is going to create way better content than someone who has horrible ideas who's traveling with a cinema camera. Focus on telling good, engaging stories, and the gear you buy should do nothing more than help you do that better. If there's anything I just discussed you're interested in, I put affiliate links to all this stuff down in the description. And if you want to spend more time hearing my stupid face talk, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Night-night, sleep tight, don't let Santa Claus bite. That made no sense. Bye-bye.